Hey gorgeous, welcome to my garden. It's the middle of June and my goodness, we have come a long way since April, which is when I did one of these garden updates, sit around drinking something. You're gonna have to guess what I'm drinking in this cup. It's not coffee, but my gosh, I am looking at everything around me and it's just, when I tell you that this is the best year that I have had in my garden as far as growing vegetables and flowers and things not quite dying on me, I mean, I am being serious. And I really hope that you guys are having really good luck with whatever it is that you're growing in your own backyards. Because as far as healthy looking plants go, mine are really, really thriving this year. I did a couple of videos right here in this same spot, exactly in this same chair. Um, the things on my table have changed, but but I did one in February uh, talking about doing some things in the garden. I did one in April as well, talking about how things were going. I think that I was just starting to harden off a few things. The plants are really, really taking off and I definitely have a few struggles here and there with things, but overall the garden is really, really looking amazing. So I have a list. I have a list of things that I want to update you on and I hope that maybe these encourage you and gives you hope to know that things that even though things are looking really really well in my garden I also struggle with a lot of, of stuff that that it doesn't necessarily go according to plan. One of the things that I that I did new this year well I really started last year in the fall are my core 10 steel planters that I got from DIY cartel you guys those planters are becoming one of my favorite things in the garden i have a lot of favorites in my garden but those things are they're just just doing amazing i started with a couple of them on the west side of the house and i have those placed right on my no dig flower bed and my goodness i just went today earlier in the day and i took some pictures and i posted those on instagram and the beds are just just getting into the nice rusty color beautiful beautiful dark look i just i just love that you guys so those were the first planter that i started with and they're doing amazing i pretty much fill every single corner of those planters with things that i started from seed i have some petunias celosias cannas i think that i have some coleus in there i can't remember what else but they are looking pretty nice, I must say. And, and the other two beds that I have on the east side of the house, I have those things full with cosmos, flax gloves. I have some of the Black Eyed Susan vines. My gosh, I just realized today when I was taking picture of those that one of the flax gloves is blooming and one of the cosmos is barely, barely opening. They're amazing, you guys, amazing. I am going to have to put some sort of stake with those cosmos because I can easily see those uh, plants just kind of falling down to the side and the planters are 26 inches tall. So they are definitely, the cosmos are going to need some support um, so they don't flap over the side of those planters. And those planters are also just starting to get that rusty color. And my gosh, I, I'm in love with those things. I got those same Corten steel planters and I made a nice little area right around my garage. And my gosh, you guys, I, I love that. I am so, so glad that I did that because I gotta be honest, I love, love to do container planting. I love to use pots and things, boxes, crates to plant anything that I can think of, right? But not having to do as many containers this year for my garden, it is really, really nice. And those planters, the ones that are around the garage, they are full of vegetables, they are full of flowers. Then as torsions that are growing there, they love that spot. Being on the east side of the house where they get a little bit of shade during the evening time, that just makes the plants so, so much healthier. I mentioned on another video that I struggle a little bit with growing nasturtiums the first couple of years because everybody talk about nasturtiums lo love the sun, they love the heat. And I did that for the first couple of years and whenever I would put those in the full sun, they will get a little bit burned, they will get a little bit sad. Honestly, I think that me being hand watering most of the time, not having consistent water on those really didn't help. 
but this year i mean they are definitely thriving and i think that the irrigation has really helped a lot now while we're talking about irrigation that has been a major major project in my garden because you guys i have been working really really hard on trying to figure out the system trying to figure out the connections trying to figure out the zones and I explained on another video on how basically my whole garden is situated as far as zones go. And here in Indiana, at least in central Indiana, up until last weekend, last weekend we got a few days full of rain. But before that, we had quite a few weeks, consecutive weeks without rain. And they were talking about going through a drought here in central Indiana and just being kind of really hard on the farmers that are growing things but having the irrigation system in my garden has been a huge huge blessing because i don't have to be here every day a couple of hours just hand watering one side of the house and being here another couple of hours the next day hand watering the other side of the house honestly having that free time not having to water everything every day has been a huge huge blessing um, on my garden because while I do love to hand water, it is nice not having to do it every day. And the irrigation system that I have installed, it's, it has been a huge, huge help. Honestly, some days I come out here in the morning and I'm taking a walk and I just act like, well, what am I going to do? I don't have to, you know, spend two hours here just watering. Honestly, it's one of those things that I don't know why I didn't do it any sooner. One of the things that I am definitely struggling with this year is aphids last year was the first year that i really noticed aphids here and there but they weren't really a huge deal for me as far as you know the devouring plants or being like a really huge struggle i noticed them on a couple of things i think that i noticed them really early on so that i just grab my hose and i will spray everything with the hose use regular water with the water pressure i was there like almost every day just you know spraying those and that took really care of it. I never really realized that I had a huge problem with aphids. But this year, I was really, really busy trying to plant every little seedling, trying to get the soil, trying to get the mulch, trying to finish the irrigation system. And by the time that I noticed that I had a huge problem on one of my plants with aphids, I think that it was just a little bit too late because I couldn't, I couldn't control it my honeysuckle that i have growing on the diamond trellis on the garage wall it was covered and i mean covered with aphids and i realized that when i was planting my dahlias that i have on those grow bags because because i noticed something sticky on the leaves and i quickly realized that they were aphids they were they just had the entire plant cover so i tried to use my hose i tried to use spray everything it was too late. Honestly, all the buds that were getting ready to open, they, there was really no taking that back. So I decided not to do anything else. Thankfully, I do not see the aphids on anything else around that area. I don't see any of my boxwoods or hydrangeas or anything else around those um, around that area over there in that corner. I don't see anything else being favored by the aphids, but we'll see how it goes in future years. What I'm going to do is that um, very soon I'm going to have to prune that honeysuckle because last year I didn't prune it and it definitely, it covered the whole thing. And it's really sad because I was really looking forward to those blooms being, you know, amazing, some sort of show for this spring, but it didn't happen. Like the, it, the blooms were entirely covered with whatever nastiness the aphids do and I didn't get any blooms. There are a couple of um, buds that maybe didn't get covered and those were the ones that bloom, but it's really, really sad. I mean, there is really nothing to show. So I am going to completely prune that vine, that one plant that is growing there. I am going to completely prune it so that next year, now that I know that the aphids love that, next year, early in the spring, I am going to have to maybe apply some sort of soapy spray. I am definitely not using any chemicals, but I'm definitely gonna have to keep an eye on it so it doesn't, it doesn't get out of hand. But as I was checking on some things around my garden, I found the Vatshiva rose that I started from bare root that I have in a black container. I noticed that it was putting out buds and I noticed that those buds are covered. 
and aphids. I have been spraying that rose now two days in a row with soapy water, used like a combination of uh, dish soap, a little bit of oil and water, and I have been spraying those. We'll see how it does. It's really, really sad because nothing else in my garden has really been um, damaged by aphids uh, other than my honey, honeysuckle and that rose. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully none of my tomatoes or none of my other vegetables get that because um, that would be really devastating. And because of that, because I know that I have those aphids now, I have been checking like underneath the leaves of it, almost everything whenever I'm walking around. So I don't know. How do you guys deal with aphids? If you have a problem with aphids, how do you guys organically deal with them? You guys, my green stocks are also doing amazing. I mean, those things, the one that I have with the herbs growing, I have a bunch of oregano, I have some thyme, some mint, some rosemary. It's growing really, really nicely. It's, it's really doing amazing. But the one with my tomatoes, my nasturtiums, and my basil, it is completely, completely covered, and I love it. Those tomatoes are really, really doing well in there, and I think that I'm going to get a lot of fruit from it because I definitely see a bunch of uh, baby, baby tomatoes that are already forming, and I'm really, really excited about them. I do have some of those plant supports that Greenstack has for, um, for growing vines around around the green stack. And I do have, I believe, three of them going there, but I don't have them going around the green stack completely. They're kind of used on the front side of the green stack because I did that on purpose. I really didn't want to have the green stack sticking out too much away from the arbor because by the time that I put those supports, it was just going to completely take that, that path area going towards the back of, of the vegetable garden. And I gotta say, it's working really, really great because I wasn't sure how those uh, supports were gonna work by just being half of them towards the front. But I am, I am honestly very, very excited about having those there because I have a bunch of tomatoes there and I have a bunch of basil and nasturtiums. So I, I am really kind of, you know, getting ideas for next year. Um, my mom loves her green stack that I that I put for her together. It's a full green stack. And she also has really, really amazing plants growing in there. So far, the green stack, really, really cool thing. And I know that there's some of you just kind of, you are kind of on the fence about getting one, but not really sure. So hopefully this helps you, you know, decide whether if getting one or two is a good deal for you. Another thing that I am struggling with this year is one of my raised beds, one of my original raised beds that I have here. I have that raised bed there pretty much going along the fence of the property and the soil is great. I added a bunch of nutrients this year for all of my raised beds so I know that the soil is great. However, all of the plants that I have here, carrots, sugar snap peas, onions, a couple of squash, and a few flowers, they are not really doing great. And the reason why is because they're really getting a lot of shade during the day. And I knew that that could happen when I first installed that bed on that specific spot, because even though it's on my side of the property, it's right underneath the neighbor's white oak tree, which it has been growing a lot in the last few years. and now all of the branches are kind of coming into my side of the property and they're really providing a lot of shade for that raised bed. I checked the other day. I have been checking for the last few days to see kind of when the sunshine actually touches that raised bed. And it's not until 3 p.m. during the day when it's in completely full sun. So from 3 p.m. until the evening time, that's how much time they get with sunshine. And it's not really a lot for all of the vegetables that I have growing there. So I don't have any neighbors living there just yet. And I also told my husband if we could do something legally, you know, like maybe cut the branches along the side, it's a huge tree. It's not something that I can do and I'm definitely not gonna pay somebody to do it. So I'm just going to have to suck it up and figure out if I'm going to keep that raised bed or if I need to maybe just plant a bunch of shrubs and then maybe add more raised beds, I don't know. But it's pretty sad because a lot of the things there um, that I have grown there, I also have grown in other areas of my kitchen garden and they are thriving. They're like three times the size of those. 
you know, it's just something that I can't really do anything about it. So my onions, I have all of my onions growing in that raised bed and they're not really doing that great. Next year for sure, I'll know not to put my onions there because they definitely need more sun than just, you know, a handful of, of hours a day. Another cool thing that I did this year for the first time that I have never done in my life is that I grafted a tomato plant, well, two tomatoes, but I make a quick video about how I did that and I really didn't have any expectations, right? I tried it and I thought if they work, that's great. If not, you know, I tried it, but the plant, the plant, the one plant with the two tomato varieties is doing really, really well, you guys. And I actually have fruit. I have fruit from the cherry tomatoes and I have fruit from the big beef tomatoes. And I'm excited because I really want to see how well the fruit develops from both sides of the tomatoes or, or from the two plants that I have there, if that makes sense. So it, it has been a really fun, a really, really cool thing. I am not really doing it for the science or to grow the best tomato possible. I'm just doing it for fun to see if, you know, if I can grow two types of tomatoes from one plant because think about it, if you only have space for five tomato plants, you could really be growing 10 different varieties of tomatoes with that space. My gosh, the mosquitoes are all around me. So it has been fun. I have been posting videos here and there on uh, Instagram on my stories, which by the way, if you're not following me there, go ahead and um, follow the link below. It's just so on Margaritas if you wanna follow me there. But overall, I gotta say my experiment with the grafted, grafted tomatoes, are it's, it's going really well. So far, I think that that's all the updates that I have for you guys. Actually, I lied. I forgot that I wanted to, to open this in front of you by watching a couple of um, YouTubers that do nothing but grow vegetables and, you know, they actually know what they're doing. Um, a couple of them mentioned using this, it's not really fertilizer. Oh, it's a, um, oh no. Ugh, I'm not going to completely get this out of the bag because I don't know how it smells. This is a micro boost from Haas Tools and it's supposed to be uh, nutrients to add to your vegetables. And a couple of those people mentioned that by adding these to their vegetable garden, that they really saw a huge, huge difference. And here's the thing, a lot of you whenever I post videos or whenever I post pictures on Instagram of my vegetables, the first thing that you guys ask is what kind of fertilizer are you using? Like the first thing that you guys think whenever you see healthy plants is she must be using a bunch of fertilizer, right? And I want to know which one. I really have not used any fertilizer other than the vegetable fertilizer from Dr. Earth. And I did use that whenever I put the plants in there, but Here's the thing about growing vegetables that I, I have stuck in my mind. It's not about the fertilizer that you use. It's about the soil that you start with, about the health and the nutrients in that soil. So before I even put anything in my raised beds, before I start planting all of my seedlings, I make sure that I have a nice compost. I make sure that I have all the ingredients there that I need. So every year at the beginning of the spring, I get the compost that I can find locally to mix to my to my soil that I already have in those beds. So I start with a great foundation for those plants and eventually I will get some sort of fertilizer in them, but it doesn't really matter what I use. If you start with crappy soil, more than likely your plants will struggle even though you use, you know, like the fanciest fertilizer. So I'm not married to one fertilizer. Normally it's whatever I can find locally, that's what I'll use. But this year, I really wanted to use something different. So that's what I ordered. I'm afraid to take it out. Actually, it doesn't smell like normal fertilizer. It almost smells like, I don't know, something earthy, you know. But this is a micro boost from Hostels. No, they're not paying me for these. Like I said, I watch a couple of people growing vegetables and they swore by these. Thing. So I do have to figure out um, how much I can use uh, to mix with a gallon container because you're not supposed to use like a lot of it. It's not supposed to be like adding to your watering system 
Um, so I really have to figure out how to use this, but I just wanted to show you. So in case you are looking for something to add to your um, regimen of fertilizing your vegetables, definitely look into these because I like what I saw. So maybe something that you can use too. I am loving the garden. I am really, really enjoying all this time, all this new growth, all the healthy plants that are coming from all the work that I put at the beginning. It has been a long time. It has been a great year so far for, for the garden. And I'm really, really excited because uh, even though I haven't harvested anything quite yet from the garden other than beets and greens, it's going really, really great. And I am really happy. I'm really excited to see um, what the garden looks like here in, like in the middle of August. Hopefully I'll be making another one of these videos to give you updates on how things are going. But so far the weather looks good. We have more rain coming next week, fingers crossed. And I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for being here and I'll see you until the next time.